Naked mole rat human hybrid James Carville was interviewed by Vox, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't know why so many news organizations are fascinated with what James Carville has to say about American politics, but for whatever reason, Vox decided to interview him and he was asked about Joe Manchin. And of course, James Carville defended Joe Manchin like the hack that he is because James Carville views politics as a team sport. So if somebody has a D in front of their name, if they're a Democrat, by definition, they're good because Democrat, good, Republican, bad. So here's what he had to say. So Jackson Rickman of Media Ed explains in a Q&A, writer Sean Illing of Vox, by the way, asked Carville if he has any substantive criticisms of Manchin and thoughts about his opposition to something like expanding the child tax credit or his position on the filibuster. Carville responded saying, look, the child tax credit is extraordinary. We've reduced child poverty in this country by 40%. It's unbelievable. And I just keep trying and trying to win elections because this thing is enormously successful. But I'll just keep saying it. If we don't have Senator Manchin, we're going to have somebody really, really, really extreme in his seat. Look, I'm a liberal Democrat. Always have been. But some of these people bitching about Manchin can't see political reality straight. 6% of adults in this country identify as progressive. Only 11 or 12% of Democrats identify as progressive. So let's just meet in the middle and say something like 7 or 8% of the country agrees with the progressive left. This ain't a goddamn debate anymore. Someone like Manchin is closer to the mainstream than a lot of these people think and pretending like he isn't won't help the cause. Okay, lots to talk about here. First and foremost, if Joe Manchin isn't in that seat and he was replaced by a Republican, functionally, what difference would that make? I want J uh, James Carville to answer this question. What difference would that make? Because if Joe Manchin is literally indistinguishable in every conceivable way, then a standard Republican, what difference does his presence there make? If he's going to block voting rights, if he won't even mildly carve out the filibuster to do voting rights, if he's blocking the Democratic Party's milk toast incrementalist agenda, what difference? does it make? It doesn't make a difference. But again, James Carville is playing on a team. So it's a win for him as long as his team has more players on the field, as long as they're in control of government. To him, everything is copacetic if that's the case. What matters is keeping Democrats there. So even if you have someone like Joe Manchin or Kirsten Sinema who are essentially Republicans, that's a win for him because as long as his team is there, that's good. Everything is good. Now, he kind of contradicts himself because he talks about the child tax credit and how good it is as a policy. And it's I think he implied it's a good way to help Democrats win elections. But ask yourself, why is that a good way to help Democrats win elections, James Carville? Could it possibly be that Americans don't actually know what they're talking about with regard to political labels? Perhaps they view themselves as more conservative than they are. But when you pull them based on policies, they're a lot more progressive. A majority of them support legalizing cannabis. A plurality supports Medicare for all. Sometimes majority supports Medicare for all. They're a lot more progressive than they self-identify as. Now, I feel like everyone knows this at this point, but people pretend as if this isn't actually a thing just so they can make their hacky political point. So let's actually look at where the mainstream is in this country, because he says that more people are or Manchin is closer to the mainstream then people give him credit for. Okay, well, let's look at Build Back Better, a bill that Manchin blocked. Most Americans overwhelmingly supported long-term care, negotiating prescription drug prices, universal pre-K, Medicare expansion, free community college, creating a civilian climate core, a pathway to citizenship for immigrants, 50% strongly or somewhat supported extending the child tax credit. That's what Americans support, but yet Manchin blocked it, and he's more mainstream, according to James Carville. Why? Well, because most people uh, don't self-identify as progressives. Okay. But they agree on the policies. So should we really take voters at face value if they have no idea what these political labels even mean? I mean, we have a Republican Party who calls everything communist. They literally think that Joe Biden is a communist. And those that don't think that he's a communist, they still call him a communist because that's what they do. So when political labels have been completely bastardized to the extent that nobody knows what they mean. I mean, they use communism and fascism interchangeably. Do we really want to take what people label themselves as at face value and just assume that Manchin is more mainstream? Because that's not the case. What matters are the policies. And see, that's the thing that hacks in the Democratic Party establishment don't really realize or care about. I don't care about the Democratic Party. I don't care about the Republican Party. What I care about are policy outcomes. And so if the current Democratic Party who are in Congress are not yielding the policy outcomes that are objectively good for democracy, like voting rights, then they're bad. 
It doesn't matter that someone might be more extreme than Joe Manchin if the result will be the same in the end. Joe Manchin is by no means the mainstream, and by saying that he is, you legitimize him. Which is weird because James Carville should have no legitimacy. I mean, when uh, Bernie Sanders won Nevada in uh, 2020, he was screeching at the top of his lungs about how this was a win for Vladimir Putin. I mean, imagine being that deranged and still having anyone ask for your opinion on something. Who gives a shit what James Carville has to say about politics? I can fart, and that fart would have more substance than James Carville. And I mean that unironically. My asshole literally sounds more intelligent than James Carville when it comes to politics, because James Carville doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's just a cheerleader for the Democratic Party, and so long as they're at least center-right, he's happy. If they get too progressive, then his rich ass is going to throw a fit because he wants his tax cuts. He doesn't want the Democratic Party to undo the damage that Republicans caused because he's sent to write himself. This is a fucking Clinton-era dipshit ghoul. So, I don't know what to say. I don't even know why I'm talking about James Carville because, you know, I feel like this is someone who should just be ignored. But since the uh, news organizations in main sh in America, since mainstream media, they're so fascinated with him, we actually do have to entertain his ideas, which is frustrating, but of course I'm going to try to do my part in pushing back, because James Carville is a fucking moron, and nobody should take this idiot seriously. Nobody. Not a single person. Not even his own wife should take him seriously. She should laugh at him whenever he opens his mouth, because he's a fucking fool. You know... You know the, you know the thing. You're getting nervous, man. man.